Welcome back to Building Character, where we figure out how to play as your favorite fictional characters in Dungeons & Dragons. Remember to like and subscribe for a shock to your system next time you play. Maybe. Today we're building Virgil Hawkins, also known as Static Shock. This is the last of our Saturday videos for a good long while, so thank you for the support you've given me on these. I'd say I'm shocked, but I knew you were the best. Turn that generator by any means you're making up. Electricity, electricity. Let's start off with our goals for this build. First, we need electricity, the ability to zap people with some static. Next, we'll get clingy with the ability to push people around or hold them in place. Finally, we'll get a trash can lid to float on. Weirdly enough, levitation, electricity, and position control are the same goals we had for Magneto. You could look at this as an alternate Magneto or Magneto as an alternate static. It just depends if you want to be a nice kid with electromagnetism or an angry adult with magnoelectrism. For stats, we'll be using the standard point array from the player's handbook. Roll for stats if you want, it's your character after all. Charisma first, you've got an electric personality and your jokes are better than mine. Kind of a low bar. Intelligence next, much like Magnet Boy, it was a toss up between which of these should be the highest. Dexterity after that, you're pretty nimble on your trash can lid. Follow that up with Constitution, concentration is pretty important for a big chunk of the build, and we'll actually get something to handle that later on. Wisdom is a bit low, we just need other things more, and we'll dump strength. Despite being a superhero, Pops is still stronger than you, and he's just a human. Technically, you're still human too, a variant human, meta-human, whatever you want to call it. This will give us a feat, the Elemental Adept feat will let you treat ones on damage die like twos and ignore resistances with an elemental damage type of your choice lightning would probably fit you best we're not going to get a lot of spells that deal other types of damage so fire would be a very bad choice bump your dexterity and your charisma with your two free points take acrobatics for your skill of choice and build your own background for history and investigation skills you're a great student and detective there isn't really a background for both of those things we'll kick things off as a sorcerer meaning we can grab two skills from the sorcerer list i'd take persuasion and arcana arcana will be helpful for techie stuff and bang baby research. We'll go with the Storm Sorcerer because they like lightning and thunder, though you're not much of a thunder guy. Storm Sorcerers get Tempestuous Magic, letting you fly 10 feet as a bonus action without provoking opportunity attacks after you've cast a spell of first level or higher, which should help you get some mobility early. For first level spells, Witch Bolt is a ranged spell attack that deals 1d12 lightning damage and stays up for a minute depending on your concentration, meaning that you don't have to reroll the attack as long as you're within range. Shield is a good way to keep yourself from dying, adding 5 to your AC as a reaction. You don't really wear armor, you wear a jacket. Jackets aren't armor, even if they're cool. For your cantrips, Shocking Grasp is a nice taser punch that deals 1d8 lightning damage to a creature you hit with a melee spell attack, and it prevents them from taking reactions for a round, which can help you get away if you need to reassess the situation. Lightning Lure forces a strength save on creatures of 8 plus your proficiency bonus and charisma modifier, pulling them 10 feet closer to you and dealing 1d8 lightning damage if they fail to start controlling controlling enemy positions early on. Light creates a light that will help you see in the dark, though Ebon's probably casting higher level darkness than this can deal with. Minor Illusion creates a visual illusion that fits in a 5 foot cube, make a little lightning thing that people can see through with an investigation check. You're mostly just using it to make fun little things, so no big deal. Second level sorcerers get a font of magic with sorcery points you can use to recover spell slots. You can also use some options from the class feature variants Unearthed Arcana. Imbuing Touch lets you make a weapon magical for a minute. Powered Reserves lets you give yourself advantage on a skill check, and Sorcerer's Fortitude lets you give yourself a d4 of temporary hit points for every point you spend. Really, I don't think any of these are super in character for you. It would be better to just use it on the meta magic stuff you get next level. For this level spell, Catapult forces a dexterity saving throw on creatures dealing 3d8 bludgeoning damage to those that fail when you hit them with an object weighing 5 pounds or less. When you scale the spell up, you can send stuff that weighs 5 more pounds per level, and it'll deal an extra d8 if you want to yeet some bigger things. Third level sorcerers get meta magic, fitting for a meta human. Then you augment your spells with sorcery points. Twin spell lets you target two people with a spell that normally targets one, which will let your witch bolt handle multiple babies at once. Extended spell doubles the spell's duration, which will let you hold your witch bolt longer, and for other spells, like this level spell, Levitate. It lets you pick something that weighs up to 500 pounds or less and move it 20 feet as an action. If it's a creature and it doesn't want to fly, they can make a constitution saving throw to resist, though I'd use this on yourself or a trash can lid under yourself. It's a pretty bad way to fly, but it's all we've got for now. I'm sorry I'm not perfect like your Aarakocra static. I'm all you've got, darn it. I don't know what that was. Feel free to make your static an Aarakocra though. 
Fourth level sorcerers get an ability score improvement. Charisma will help you be better at casting spells. And if you're gonna turn your one trick power into a multi trick power, you're gonna need a good modifier. With this level spell, Hold Person will help you give someone some static ling by forcing a wisdom saving throw on a creature, paralyzing them if they fail. Bust out a couple of sorcery points for some twinning, and this can hold multiple criminals at once. Static has a habit of bringing people together. Fifth level sorcerers get third level spells, and if I had a favorite level of spell, it's third. There are so many good options here. Lightning Bolt would be my first choice for you, forcing a dexterity saving throw on creatures in a 90 foot line, dealing 8d6 lightning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. Static uses lightning. I don't really have a joke. This is pretty straightforward. Sixth level storm sorcerers get Heart of the Storm, giving you resistance to lightning and thunder damage, and you can deal lightning damage equal to half your sorcerer level to creatures within 10 feet of you of your choice after you cast a spell of first level or higher that deals lightning or thunder damage, like lightning bolt or witch bolt. For this level spell, it's called fly, and it gives a creature you touch a flying speed of 60 feet per round for 10 minutes depending on your concentration. For flavor, say that you're scooting around on a disc your friend made, like a big uh, round disc, not like a CD. 7th level sorcerers can learn 4th level spells. Storm Sphere creates a 20 foot radius sphere, forcing strength saving throws on creatures inside, dealing 2d6 bludgeoning damage to those that fail. I think it's supposed to be hail, but it doesn't actually specify that, so make it debris. As a bonus action on turns the sphere is active, you can make a ranged spell attack that deals 4d6 lightning damage to creatures within 60 feet of the center, with advantage if they're inside that 20 foot radius sphere. It lasts for a minute depending on your concentration if you want a little area of effect and don't mind that you can't fly for a second or a minute depending on your concentration i just said that you really should be paying more attention eighth level sorcerers get another ability score improvement so we can cap off our charisma to maximize our mastery of magno electricism i botched that i'm leaving it in for this level spell, Mage Armor will help you not die. It makes your AC 13 plus your Dexterity modifier for 8 hours. No concentration required, just have a little bit of static around you that pushes everything away that might hurt you. Ninth level Sorcerers can learn 5th level spells. Telekinesis lets you lift things that weigh 1,000 pounds or less. If those things are people, they can make a Strength Contest against your Spellcasting modifier, but that's capped, so best of luck to them. You can move the thing 30 feet as an action on your turns for 10 minutes, depending on your concentration, and switch to other things if you want. Technically, it should be metal but if you're in an urban setting there's metal everywhere also it doesn't have to be metal you can make your character marginally different than the source material i believe in you 10th level sorcerers get another meta magic option heightened spell lets you force disadvantage on a creature's saving throw against one of your spells to make sure that you're landing your lightning or sticking your static for this level spell silent image creates a non-audible illusion that fills a 15 foot cube for a big sign to let people know where to pick up the bad guys it can also be seen through with an investigation check against your spell dc but again, you're using it for a sign. It's not really meant to be convincing. And also, it probably would be pretty convincing because you have very high charisma. 8th level sorcerers can learn 6th level spells. Chain lightning lets you force a dexterity save on a creature within 150 feet of you and up to 3 creatures within 30 feet of them, dealing 10d8 lightning damage to those that fail, half as much to those that succeed. It's more bigger lightning, which means it's more better lightning. 12th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement. There are so many places I want to put it, but let's start off with dexterity for better AC. 14 isn't great with mage armor, and making it 19 with a lightning shield is going to be wasting too many first level spell slots for my taste. 13th level sorcerers can learn 7th level spells, but none of these are very staticky. So grab knock to shock a lock off its block to open locks you're not supposed to. It isn't great for sneaking though because it makes a really loud noise. It's fine, you have lightning powers and flight. Those aren't really subtle powers. 14th level storm sorcerers get storm's fury, letting you deal your level in lightning damage to creatures that hit you with a melee attack, then force a strength saving throw on them, pushing them back 20 feet if they fail. Maybe Pops would be more okay with your super heroing if he knew that you blasted anyone away who hits you with a ton of damage. 15th level sorcerers can learn 8th level spells. Power word stun automatically stuns a creature with 150 HP or less, and they're stuck stunned until they can make a constitution saving throw, which could keep that up indefinitely if they are not constitutionally inclined. 16th level sorcerers get another ability score improvement or a feat. The prodigy feat will give us an extra skill like deception to maintain alter egos and whatnot. It also gives you expertise in a skill. I recommend arcana or history, just one of the intelligence skills since since we're not going to be able to invest in it as heavily as I'd like for Virgil. This will at least give you double the proficiency bonus with one of those skills. 17th level sorcerers can learn their last spell, and it can even be one from the 9th level, but 
none of the ninth level spells are very staticky. So for accuracy, which is what this channel is about, grab the fifth level spell, Hold Monster, which is like Hold Person, but you can use it on non-humanoid creatures. You aren't restricted to clinging to the humans. You can cling to anyone and anything, like me in middle school or high school. Honestly, I had dependency issues. Respect people's space. They'll let you know if they want to hang out. You also get another meta magic option. So grab empowered spell to re-roll an amount of damage die equal to your charisma modifier on spells you cast with just one sorcery point. Between this and the elemental adept feat, you're pretty consistent with your lightning. 18th level storm sorcerers get wind soul, making you immune to lightning and thunder damage. You also get a flying speed of 60 feet that you can reduce to 30 feet to give eight of your friends a 30 foot flying speed as well if you want to bring your hold class on a field trip for an hour per short rest. Concentration free flight is huge, letting you keep up a storm sphere or a static holding while flying around. 19th level sorcerers get our last ability score improvement, bring that dexterity up for more nimble flight. It would be great if we could cap it and constitution and intelligence, but hey, there are limits here. You're not Superman, even though you're in the same universe as him. Sometimes, not always. But there's no limit to the power you can have with 20th level of Sorcerer, with Sorceress Restoration, letting you recover four sorcery points on a short rest. It's not very good. Capstone of Sorcerer is pretty bad. It's so bad that I'm actually going to recommend dipping to Rogue for expertise in two skills and an extra skill with the multi-class. The capstone of this class is less useful than first level abilities. That's bad. But is the build bad? No. And now that we've hit level 20, let's talk about it. First, lightning is a pretty good element to go all in on. Chain lightning is a great spell and you can ignore resistances and you can make sure your damage is more consistent thanks to things like elemental adept. You also have a permanent flying speed, which is pretty amazing for mobility. Finally, you are great at controlling where people are with the storm sorcerer abilities and telekinesis to put people where you want them to be. For weaknesses, why didn't you take a ninth level spell? Just cause I told you not to? That's stupid, get meteor swarm or wish. You're also low on HP, thanks to Sorcerer's really bad D6 hit die. You're sitting around 100 total, so power word kill could kill you. Hey, that's another good spell you could take. Finally, even though you ignore resistances to lightning damage, you got nothing for full immunity, so some stuff could just ignore your damage. So it's a good thing you're fast. Fly away if you have to and get some superheroes who can deal with that. Then give them a flying speed or play support by holding things in place. You can get a lot done for someone with one power. Just remind your DM which knights you're available to play, it would be a shame if they just forgot you existed all the time thanks for watching and thank you for supporting these saturday videos i'll pull the numbers next month and send out a tweet letting everyone know how much we raise for charities around the 24th so follow me on twitter at tulakva and support me on patreon if you want me to have more time to make more charity videos by hiring a second editor thank you